Hi everyone, how are you? Uh, last session, as you remember, we wrote this very fancy application that had two pages, a welcome page and a login page. And this, the welcome page had two actually widgets, we could say, a title, which is a text field, which is a text at the top and a button. And when we clicked at the button, we were navigated to the second page. It had which had two text fields. These text fields are not working yet. We cannot type yet inside them. But as you remember, we mentioned that writing only these two simple, very fancy layouts and pages are not readable, as you can see. You know, we are trying to uh, talk to the framework with very basic and primary stuff, drawing stuff. And also here, for example, for recognizing the callback within, because this callback is the callback of the whole window, the whole window. We have to have, for example, uh, hundreds of if statements, thousands maybe here to recognize uh, the mouse click inside each of the bottoms of the, each of the pages that we have. So we have to actually make it better here and move toward having uh, reusable how can, structures. Uh, so each UI is composed of a bunch of stuff, for example, texts, uh, text fields, for example, the lists or images or uh, so that sort of stuff. And we want to lay out our page with those kinds of elements, not just by commanding, you know, very using very basic commands. So, <clears throat> so we want to, this is the, this is the goal here. This is our dream here to uh, pass a button to the window and ask the window to draw the button and then register a callback on that button itself and talk with the button itself as an, as an entity here. So, for example, if you've uh, worked with Android or JavaFX or other frameworks, you can see that in Android we have views or view groups, for example, like text field or linear layout or some so that sort of stuff. Or in JavaFX, which is a desktop framework application, desktop framework, uh, they have nodes and groups. For example, they have, again, text node or list node or you can group those nodes inside, for example, uh, absolute layout. I, I've forgotten the names. Or, or for example, in Flutter, we have widgets. They name them widgets. For example, text widget list view, which is a widget row column, which can we can put and lay out multiple widgets inside it to group them. So as you can see, all the frameworks, all the UI frameworks have these terminologies, these reusable structures that that the developers talk with them, actually talk through them, try to uh, uh, tell their intention through those structures, not just by creating uh, and calling very basic primary commands. Okay, so for example, let's say our dream here is to have, uh, we can name them widgets or like Flutter framework or views like Android or nodes like JavaFX. Uh, let's call them widgets. Uh, okay, so let's create a package here for widgets. And let's have our first widget here, which is a button. Button. And this button, let's say we'll have And uh, X a Y and a width, of course, a height. These are the prop properties of, of a widget. Then we can have a background color, for example, background color and also the title okay 
also the title. And then let's say we can register a callback here. So for example, we have this var on press callback, which is a simple callback because we don't want to pass the point, the position of the cursor, or we just want to say this button is called, is, is pressed. And I'll also, uh, I think the uh, title is that. I think that's enough. So let's add a function here for fun draw content. Draw content. So this draw content will ask for a canvas, which is our own canvas, a UI canvas. This will ask for a canvas, and this button will try to uh, draw it itself on, on this canvas based on these properties that it has. So for example, this will say it has to have a paint as well, private. Let's make it private to not make it visible to the outside world. Paint equals UI paint. Now point paint. Okay. Here also we have we should have title color or text color. This is another property. Here we say, let's change the color of the paint to the background color. And then let's ask the canvas to draw that rectangle. We are, we are moving those basic commands in, and hiding it inside the bottom. And then we can reuse the bottom. You know, we can have as many as bottoms later, hopefully. And this button will have the duty of drawing itself to know how to draw itself based on its property. And we will talk with these properties. So draw rectangle, which asks for UI point, which is the top left. Yes, which can be, which is X and Y. And another UI point, which is X plus width, which is right, and Y plus height which is the bottom and of course the paint. So here we are drawing the, uh, the uh, background and then we change the color of the paint to the title color and try to draw the text, which is the title. Title is not an integer, it's a string. Okay. The anchor, uh, we need to actually have some kind of a function, some kind of a utility to uh, ask for the width or for the boundary and the width of the height of this, of this text that we are going to uh, draw. But just let's guess that if we start it from the left and the center of the height, it will be almost centered. And the good enough is enough for us now. So let me just find that typeface that we have here. Uh, now the typeface is inside the UI canvas, which is wrong. We have to move it outside and tell it that the paint itself. So uh, the anchor could be the UI point X, for example, plus 50 maybe, and Y plus height divided by two, this one, uh, maybe 10, okay. And the paint, okay. So now we have this draw content, which asks for a canvas and use these properties. And also, uh, this one is more trickier, the callback, we can tackle that later, okay. So let's get back here and let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of these here. And let's say uh, we want to create a button here. Say val, name it login button, and which is a button. 
and then we want to specify the properties. For example, we can say we want the x to be uh, 100, the y to be again 100, the width I believe was 200, and the height was 100. Then we have it can say the background color which we used the background color before draw rectangle which is this one this is background color and also the title color uh, the title color was this one which was green and also we have the title itself of course which we can say login uh, yeah, we have this press call back. We can tackle that later. Here, we can say login button dot draw content, and we can pass the canvas. Okay, let's run it. We can see that we have the same button here, and it has this title inside and the background and and we don't have any primary yes, basic draw commands here you see no basic draw commands here we are talking with uh, ui widgets through ui widgets for example we are, we are specifying a button which has these properties and this, the framework has to draw that the way that we want the way that we specified it <clears throat> and and this is good so Okay, we have this button. We can have as many as buttons we want. We can have, for example, another button. Like, let's copy and paste it here and say, this one is the exit button. And let's make it, for example, from 300. The, mm -hmm. And Let's name it exit application and run. Oh, we have not drawn it yet. We have to draw the exit button as well. Okay, we have two buttons. You can see this one is login button. This one is exit button. And we can have as many as buttons that we want. And the button class is hiding the implementation inside it. Let's try to implement this. I'm not actually uh, saying that this is the right way of doing this because we have to give this login button to the window itself. We should not uh, get the callback of the uh, drawing of each frame and then create the buttons and pass that canvas to the... This is not how other frameworks work. In the other frameworks, you just create your button and pass it to the framework and tell it, I want you to draw this on the screen. And it does. And, and we will do that. So, but step by step. So in the press callback, uh, we can say here that we can pass it to the buttons. We can, let's move this callback here and say, if login button Let's say the buttons has some kind of a function inside them that we pass the uh, cursor position and they, they tell us they use it. For example, they use it if they are interested in. For example, we say um, use or consume consume uh, mouse event. So we are getting, we are actually grabbing the mouse event from the window and passing to the widget itself and the widget has to recognize if if that uh, event is inside its boundary is within its boundary and if, if the for example mouse event type is release a release after a click for example <clears throat> and let's pass the point and also the type as well Okay, we, we, we will return a boolean, we indicate that this button 
consume that event so that this callback will, won't actually pass the event to the other to the other widgets. So inside the consume, we can hide the implementation that we have there. We can say, uh, I just deleted this part. Let's copy and paste it there. So say if the type is release and the point is and also x plus width and y plus height uh -huh. we can return this one or if it is not the case, we can return false. So if this is a release and the, the point, the point of the cursor is within our boundaries, then we tell the callback of the window that we consume this event and don't pass it to the others. And, and also we call back the on press callback. Okay, we just call back. Here we say if not, then call the exit bottom dot consume point and type. Okay. If the login button does not consume the mouse event, we pass it to the exit button and we ask it to consume it. And we don't care for the return type because we don't have any other elements or widgets on the page yet. Now now actually we can uh, register our callbacks directly to the bottom themselves. And this is very actually pleasing. So let's say print ln uh, login button was clicked. And let's register a callback to the exit button. And say exit button was pressed. Let's run it. We have two buttons when I click outside. Oh, it's not working. We have a bug. We have a bug inside that button. Okay, if type is release, and if the point is greater than x and the y is greater than y, Oh, oh, oh. I, I just got rid of that last if statement. So also if point dot x is less than equals x plus width and point dot y is less than equals y plus height, then we take it as a press inside the boundary of the bottom. Let's run it again. We click outside. Nothing is happening. If I click on login, we have login button was clicked. If we click on exit, we have the exit button was pressed or clicked or whatever. So you can see that we have registered the callbacks to the widgets itself. And we are not here. We are not. We don't have any. Uh, we will hide these as well later. So you can see that we have created two widgets with very uh, basic actually properties. And we have registered the callbacks. And then the framework has to figure it out to how to draw the buttons on the screen with these properties that we have specified and how to call us back when the mouse is clicked on, on them. Uh, and this is, this is very exciting actually, very, very exciting. So we have two buttons here and we have registered callbacks. Okay, uh, I think it is enough for now. Uh, next session, we will try to group uh, a bunch of widgets inside a group widget. For example, Android has view group or the JavaFix has the node, uh, the group, the group itself or the flutter, for example, has a row or a column or that, that we can register multiple, for example, buttons to them and they will have to draw the content and manage the press callback of each button. 
And we have to finally actually ultimately get rid of this window callback and window, window draw content callback and window press callback. We will only have to assign or register the root of the uh, the root widget of our uh, actually layout, the page that we have. And the window has to recognize how to draw all, all those elements and manipulate and manage the press callback, like how the other frameworks are, are working. Okay. Thank you and bye.